I'm starting with the Python here because I want to set everything up, show you what we're going to do in paper, and then come back. And so what we want to look at is the energy graphs for a mass on a spring with dampening forces. So start off with a viscous drag of a force that's proportional to the velocity, and then just a plain friction and make energy graphs. And so I've already made this part. I just want to show it to you. It's actually kind of artistic, right? Um, so here's my mass on a on a surface connected to a wall with a spring. I mean, that's just that's just artistic. I don't know. I like to look at it. So let me just show you the code real quick, and then we'll talk about the physics. And then we'll, I didn't finish the code. I just made that. Um, so right here, all that stuff, I'm just ma I ma pre-made the graphs. So there's nothing graphed. Uh, I made the floor. It's an object that's a box. You do have to kind of like, you know, when you make these things, if here you'll notice that I put the box of the ground at zero, even though I didn't really need to do that. Uh, but the position, the Y position is the center of the box. So that floor has some thickness. So I want to I put the, the bottom a little bit lower than uh, Y equals zero. But, and then it has X, Y, and Z values for the size. And it's just gray. Uh, the wall is another box. Again, you got to get the position just right. And I put the color as a vector just so I can make it a darker gray. So if you can make uh, color as a vector because it has red, green, and blue. You can give it red, green, and blue values between 0 and 1 so you can make any color you want. So half, half, half is gray. Uh, then the mass is the thing that oscillates. And then PP is just a point. That's a little trick, right? Because I want to create that spring from a point on the wall to the box. And so I'm actually going to the center of the box, but I can't use the center of the wall because it's a different height. So you'd have a, you wouldn't would have a horizontal spring. So there's just a vector location for where I want to connect that spring to the wall. And then I calculate the unstretched length. I'm assuming it's unstretched. And, I, and I'll show you that, that point. Uh, and then these are just the constants, mass, the spring constant, the drag coefficient for the viscous force, and then the coefficient of friction for um, the other force. If I run this again, let me show you. So you see where this is connected right there. That's not the center of this of that box right there. It's just some point. And this one's actually connected into uh, the center of the box. Okay, so we w I want to model this, but the way the best way to model this is to build it up. So I'm going to make a mass moving with no drag force first. Okay, um, and we're going to do it numerically. So let's jump over the paper and just talk about that briefly and then then code that okay so i have this mass um connected to a spring and it's gonna you know i want it to oscillate back and forth so if i if i don't want to include friction or drag force really the only force i have acting on this is the spring force okay technically there is the downward gravitational force and the upward normal force but those two forces are equal and opposite because it doesn't move up and down in the, in the y direction. So I only have that force. I do need to calculate the stretch of the spring. Notice that the mass is not at x equals 0. So I can't just say negative kx. Um, but I can calculate the amount that it's stretched with this vector l, which is going to be from that point pp, that's that point pp right there, to the, uh, the center of the block. I can calculate that vector. And then I can calculate the difference between that and the unstretched length, and that will be my stretch. And then I need this L hat, a unit vector, in that direction so I can make this whole thing a vector again. And I need that as a vector. And then I'm going to use this, the momentum principle, which I've done many times before. Uh, and if we break this into short time intervals and we assume the time step is small enough that the force is constant, even though it's not, then I can uh, use that to update the momentum so really, I'm going to calculate the net force first. In this case, it's just that spring force. And then I'm going to up, use that momentum to update the position, update time, and then go back up here, and then do all those steps again. Um, and then R is the position of the block. And then when I move the position of the block, that's going to change L, which is going to change the spring force. OK, let's just get to it. I want to do that. Oh, I do want to make a graph. I'm, my graph, I'm going to plot. Uh, energy versus time. So I'm going to have uh, I'll just whatever k, u, and k plus u. So k, how do I calculate the kinetic energy in each step? Um, you could say it's one half m v squared. It's a scalar value. But I'm actually going to calculate this as the magnitude of p squared over two m. Because if p is mass times velocity, this is the same thing. And that way, I, I probably am going to calculate the velocity anyway um, because it, it shows up here, and I'm going to need it down there. But 
I'm going to calculate kinetic energy that way. What about the potential energy? This is going to be 1 half k s squared. So s is a scalar, k is a spring constant. So that's, that's a scalar value right there. So that's good. And then k plus u is k plus u. Python time. We'll come back. Okay, so I have a lot of stuff here. Um, one thing I, I did, I have, is I'm starting the mass at the equilibrium point. So if I just run it, it's not going to work. I need to give it an initial velocity. So let's do that. Let's say mass.p equals m. And you can make uh, m a property of mass, but it's the only mass in the problem, so I don't, I'm not even going to do that. Uh, times the vector. I'm not sure how fast I want this to go. Let's try 0 0.0200. So that's my velocity in the positive x direction. Let's just see if that works. It might, it might be crazy, um, but that's 2 centimeters per second. That seems like it could be a reasonable thing. Uh, now I need my time and my time step. I'm going to pick 0 0.01. I'm not sure if that's, that'll work or not. Now while t is less than, let's run it for 5 seconds rate 100. So if I have a time step of 0 0.01 and a rate of 100, it's going to run in real time. That says don't do more than 100 calculations per second. The first thing I want to do is to calculate the force, but to do that, I need the vector L. So let's calculate L. It's going to be equal to mass.pos minus pp. So remember, pp is my, my point. I don't know why I call it pp. But that was that point on the wall that it's connected to. So if I take a vector uh, from that point to my mass, it'd be mass.pos minus pp. And that's that vector L. Now I can calculate uh, the stretch. S is going to be the magnitude of L minus L0. No, capital L0. And I already have L0. I calculated it up here. Now I can say, let's say F net is going to be equal to negative k times S times L hat, which is norm L. Okay, so that's that first part. Now, I need to update the momentum. Mass.p equals mass.p plus F net times dt. Now I need to update the position. Mass.pos, mass.pos plus mass.p times dt divided by m. Now I need to actually fix the spring, right? Because even if I move the mass, I want to display the spring. So I need to move. I don't actually have to move the spring. It's connected to the wall and the wall is stationary. I just need to change the axis of the spring. So what do I call it? A spring? Spring. Spring dot axis equals mass dot POS minus PP, which is L, but I just moved it. So I didn't want to put L. Uh, now I need to update time t equals t plus dt. Let's see if this works, and if it works, we can come back and add our graphs. Remember, this is without friction. So let's run it. Wow, it's exciting. So I was scared that my velocity would be too big, so I picked something too small. That's fine, we can fix this. Fixable. Let's just make this eight. I don't know, let's just pick something like that. That's still too small. Uh, let's pick 0.2, is that too big? Okay. Uh, I want it a little bit bigger. A little bit, that, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go with 0.3 and, I, and that's final, final value. Yeah, okay. And there, see, I mean, that's art. Okay. Now let's go ahead and graph the energy because in this case, if I have the system consisting of the mass and the spring, the total energy kinetic plus potential should be constant, right? Because there's no work done on the system. So that's one check that we can have to make th sure things are working. You can do it before or after you update time because the time's small enough, it doesn't matter. Number one, calculate K. K equals mag mass.p squared, p squared over 2m, and I always like to put parentheses around this because I get scared, divided by 2 times m. u is uh, 0.5 times k times s squared, which I already calculated s. Um, technically, I should probably recalculate it, but that's fine. And then now I'm going to make these plots. So I called the graphs, what did I call them? 
I call them FK, FU, and FE. So I need to plot those. So FK.plot TK, FU.plot TU, FE.plot TK plus U. Okay, so the kinetic energy is not, the total energy is not constant. Let's make a smaller time step. That is kind of weird, and I think it may just be, I think I know why. I think because I should probably, I'm actually out of phase. I really need to recalculate this stuff. Um, let's put this, let's put this, redo this down here. Let's see if that fixes it. And then if that doesn't fix it, I'll make a smaller time step. Ah, still. Let's just do a time step of 0, 0.0 and increases to 1,000. Smaller time steps fix everything, which is bad. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty good. It's still a little wavy. Um, I'm not really happy with that, but I'm not completely sad either. So that's a medium point, so we can go ahead. Okay, so now I want to add a drag force, and, and that's just C times the velocity. So all I need to do is to calculate that and add it into the net force. So let's do this. I'm going to calculate V. V equals, uh, let's do this, mass dot V. Uh, I should, let's see, is mass dot P divided by M. Because I don't, up, I never updated the velocity. So I, I'm updating the velocity now. And I can use that down here. So F net is going to be this, minus C times mass dot V. That's it, right? That's it. That's the drag force. So as it moves along, um, the faster it goes, the greater this drag force is. And it's going to always be doing negative work because the displacement is in the direction of the velocity, but the drag force is in the opposite direction. So it's negative work. It should decrease the energy of the whole system. Let's just run this and see what happens, and then we can talk about it. But notice I did, all I did was add that, those two lines. I calculated the velocity, and I added that one thing. It's super simple to add. I mean, you can do this analytically. It's a little bit more complicated, but so I will, there, there it is slowing down. So that's good. It should, it should slow down. Now I'm going to run it again because I want to watch the graph there. That's pretty good. So you see a picture like this in the book. Um, and in fact, I want to run it for just a uh, short amount of time so that the graph looks a little bit better. Let's run it for uh, three seconds, maybe two, just two. So notice here, the purple line is my total energy of the system, and it is decreasing because of that negative work done by the drag force. Right here, what's happening to the drag, to the energy? It's, it's constant at that little short point. Why is it constant not changing there? Look at these two curves. This one is the kinetic energy, and this is the potential energy. So what's the object doing? It's slowing down and stopped. When it stopped, it's not moving and there's no drag force, and if there's no drag force, it's not losing any energy. So that's why it's flat right there. Um, and then up here, if it's, if it's not moving, the spring is compressed the most, so that this is a maximum. But there you can see the decrease in energy over time for that system because of that negative work. And it doesn't matter if it's moving to the left, to the right, or to the left. Uh, the, the drag force is always in the opposite direction as the displacement, so you decrease in, uh, in energy. It does negative work on the system, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's jump back and look at this for a second. Um, I, want to, uh, cal I want to change this to another force. I want to use um, friction force between the the box and the surface. And so we can model friction as the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now, we do have to use a little trick here, right? Because if uh, the change in momentum in the y direction is zero, then I know something about the normal force. The normal force magnitude has to be equal to mg. So this is gonna be mg. Also, uh, I need to make this a vector because the problem is how am I gonna take into account that when it's moving this way, the friction is that way? 
when it's moving that way, the friction is that way. So I can just include this V hat. I can say negative V hat. It's the opposite direction as the velocity. But you'll notice it's different than the velocity because this is going to be either uh, positive. This is actually not going to work. I just realized it. But let's run it anyway. Because um, this doesn't change in magnitude, it just changes in direction. Uh, so let's add that in there and see what happens and then see how to fix it. I just realized that would be a problem. I've done this before and I think I made that mistake too. But Okay, so we're going to go up here, edit. Um, I'm going to take away F net. So I need to let's calculate uh, FF, the frictional force. It's going to be equal to negative mu k, mu, I just called it mu, yeah, mu times m times g, I don't have g, so let's put g up here, g equals 9.8. So normally we write g as a vector, but I'm not using the vector nature of g, so I'm just going to write g as a scalar. Um, you can change things up as long as you're careful and responsible for what you're doing. You have to be responsible for your code. You do dumb things, you have, to be, you, have to, to pay, you have to suffer the consequences of that. Times norm mass dot V. That should do it, right? Negative M, yeah. And then down here, F net, I'm just gonna take this out. Comment that out and then put plus FF. So plus, because I've already included the negative sign. FF is already the vector friction force. Let's see what happens. Oh, it just stopped. <laughs> it stopped. And then what happens is it actually did, it worked. Because it, when it stopped, the problem is that that friction force never goes to zero. But when it stops, it just keeps changing back and forth in different directions over time. So this is really the only interesting part. Let's decrease that coefficient of friction to make it more interesting. Let's say uh, 0, 0.5. Hmm. That doesn't look right because I guess you're, yeah, it still wouldn't do work as when it stopped. It's changing directions. So, I mean, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought this would be cooler than it was, but it did stop. Notice the other one decayed down and never fully stopped because the drag force decreased um, with time, with velocity. So the slower it was going, the lower that drag force was and the lower it the slower it lost energy. This one loses the energy at a, at a constant rate because it d doesn't depend on the velocity. It depends on how far it went. Okay, so I think that's good enough. Uh, I will give you the code to this uh, just because you might want to practice drawing awesome things like that. That's the art part of this, save that. Uh, and that's that. That, mean, that means I'm gone, okay? That means, hey, I'm done. And that, that's a nice thing, right? I'm trying to say peace. Peace be with your physics and have fun. And I'll talk to you later.